Hi, this is Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. What we're going to make is a coffee cake. This particular coffee cake is, well, you use yeast in it. Uh, it's a uh, no, relatively not quick, quick recipe, but it's an awfully good one. I actually like to make the dough in my bread maker. As I mentioned on all my videos, you could certainly make this by hand if you prefer, but I find for the video and also for me, it's just much easier uh, to get very good results and accurate results by using the dough cycle on my bread machine. Now, uh, or bread maker, I should say. I'm gonna give you the recipe right off the bat uh, because I no longer will be giving the ingredient uh, list on the bottom due to people that are taking videos and and taking them to other sites and uh, taking well taking my work uh, so I'm going to take uh, my time and explain to you uh, what is uh, all the ingredients to to make this pear I'm sorry for to didn't mention that but we're using pears in fact there's one and a half cups of chopped fresh pears. Use whatever brand that you want, but we're going to make pear coffee cake. Uh, so this is what you're going to start off by using. One cup of buttermilk, and you, knew, you need to heat that to at least 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I actually just use a huge coffee uh, cup or mug, and I put my milk in there. You're also going to put a quarter cup of water and two tablespoons of butter. And then I actually heat it in my uh, microwave, the buttermilk, the water, and the butter, that's all together, to that 110. And uh, that's how I do mine. Now, follow your directions on your bread maker, uh, you know, when to put your liquid in, when to put your dry in, because all machines are different like. But uh, let's, let's continue. You're also going to need a quarter cup of granulated sugar, a teaspoon of salt, three and one quarter cups of all-purpose flour, one egg that's been beaten, and two and one quarter teaspoons of dry active yeast. So that's how you're going to make the, the, the dough. I'm going to take it out. What I would suggest is have at least a quarter of a cup of all-purpose flour ready uh, on your countertop and to work the, the, uh, the, the dough, okay? The dough is going to be a little bit wet or a little bit sticky, so be prepared for that, okay? If you don't like that, you can add a little bit more flour to it if you want. I prefer to have it like this so then I can use my last of the quarter cup for working with the dough and handling it and all that because I, I want the dough to be very uh, light and not dense or, or heavy, okay? Alright, so we have the uh, dough for the coffee cake and what we're going to do is we're going to roll this out. Let me put a little bit of flour on my rolling pin here. And we want it to be about 16 by 9, a rectangle, okay? So let me put a little bit of flour on the top there. out of the way a little bit. Whoops. You can see it is sticky, but the dough is so light and so delicate. It, it's just really a nice, uh, a nice dough. It really is. Just want to put some on my hands here. Okay. So, let's see, I've got a nine, I just want to extend it a little bit bigger here. Okay, all right. 
and I almost forgot. Now, I want to give you the ingredients for the filling, okay? You're going to need uh, two tablespoons of butter, okay, for the filling. And I accidentally forgot about it. So I'm just going to take a second out, but keep talking to you uh, while I get that ready. Okay. And you want it just a little bit softened. Because you don't want, you know, you don't want it um, too soft or melted. Okay. So let's see how this will turn out here. Just gonna use my pastry brush here. I don't know how I forgot that. Lots of stuff going on today in the kitchen here with family and everyone, so I guess I'll just blame it on that rather than myself. <laughs> but you get the idea. I usually have the butter a little bit softer than this. But just make sure that you, you know, spread it all out. Leave about two inches open on the edges, you know, one and a half to two, that kind of thing. Okay. All right, I got a little bit of a little bit of a hole there. Okay. There. Okay. All right. This is the one and a half cups of your fresh pears. Uh, if you want to prevent them from browning, you'll want to put a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of water uh, to prevent them from turning too, uh, too brown. Uh, when you are ready for them, drain all that liquid out and then I actually put it on um, paper towel a couple times just to get all the, you know, as much moisture out because you don't want your coffee cake to come out uh, uh, soggy. Okay, what we're also going to be putting in for make the filling, besides the one and a half cups chopped of fresh uh, pears, your choice, one tablespoon of cinnamon. We're going to be putting in a half a teaspoon of ginger, and we're going to put a quarter of a teaspoon of cloves. Now, if you don't like cloves, leave it out. Just add, uh, you know, your cinnamon to that if you want. Uh, and and leave the cloves out, uh, cloves out. But the cloves do make for with the pears. Oh, it's very fragrant when it's bake, baking in the oven. And you can well the combination. It really does taste good. And you're also going to be putting in a half a cup of raisins. Okay. And I'm using the dark. You can use uh, the golden if you prefer. Now, if you want to put walnuts, chopped walnuts in, this is where you'd also use about, well, about a half a cup. Um, the I'm making this for uh, someone that cannot eat nuts, so I'm leaving them out. But again, walnuts or any type of nut that you prefer, I think would go great with, um, with the filling of this pear uh, coffee cake, okay? All right. So then you're just going to start putting it down on the top. Now it'll probably look to you like you don't have enough, but you really do. Once you start rolling this up, you can also make um, rolls out of this, cinnamon rolls, if you want, if you don't want to do the coffee cake shape. And I'm just using my clean hands here just to spread it out. And again, you're probably going to say, oh, I don't know, it doesn't look like enough pears, doesn't look like enough uh, filling, but it really is. Now, what else you're going to do is you're going to put a quarter of a cup of uh, granulated sugar all over the top of this. And you can see I did stay away from the edges, about two inches. You can go an inch, inch and a half, whatever you want. Okay, and then I'm going to roll it towards you because I think you could maybe see it better. Just roll it up as a uh, jelly roll style. Okay. 
Okay. Like that. Now you're going to need a pan, of course, to bake it in. And uh, you can uh, just spray uh, with your whatever brand of spray that you like. Now you're going to want to bring this together and you'll want to um, seal it where the seam is. So I'm going to press that down. Okay. All right, and then a little bit more flour. I use up all of that quarter uh, of a cup. I really do. I'm going to just turn it on its side. Okay. And then I'm just going to bring it into a circle. And then I have to make sure that the, the two ends that I pinch them together and bring them together. Okay, and then just to form that, okay. And I'm going to try to lift this up quickly. Whoops. Lay that back down on the baking tray. Make sure that that seam, bring it together. Reshape it. Now this is going to have to double in size, so it's going to take you at least 50 to 1 hour with a towel over it. Now what I'd like to do is I actually take an egg wash, a beaten egg, and I cover the whole top with an egg wash. I would be prepared when you're baking it, if it starts to get a little too brown, cover it with foil. Okay, so just cover it with your egg wash. Okay. There we go. I think we got it covered pretty well. Okay. And then I take the scissors about one inch apart and uh, cut it about, um, just cut into, into the sides um, uh, about two thirds. Okay. So I'm just going to cut into it and I'm going to do that about every inch or inch and a half like that okay well you get the idea all right and then cover it with a clean towel I like to use a linen towel and wait till it doubles in size and then you're going to bake it at 375 uh, for 20 to 25 minutes uh, do start checking. Uh, I started checking mine around 15 minutes or so because uh, you don't, you know, you don't want to, um, you don't want to burn it. That's for sure. So let me just clean this out of the way a little bit. Now you might want to make a glaze for it, uh, and it though it's very easy. Take about a cup of powdered sugar a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla and three to four teaspoons of milk to the consistency of how thick or thin you want your glaze once the coffee cake has cooled down enough that you can do that okay I'm going to wash my hands real quick because I was working with raw egg and I want to show you one that um, that is baked up this particular coffee cake is going to expand and, and become uh, quite large, uh, so be prepared for that. Uh, this one, I did put the glaze over it, okay, and um, we'll cut into it. So just let me grab a, a knife here, alrighty, 
Okay. And we'll see what we have. It comes out and bakes to a beautiful um, uh, golden brown on the top and the bottom. Just watch out, as I said, for um, you know that that browning. Now this is actually even a little bit warm yet, so I'm really kind of rushing it to cut it. But I want to show you how beautiful the filling uh, is. And I hope you can see that. You can see um, the pears. And oh my gosh, this the great sugar. And it's so light. Um, let me see if I can show you the bottom. It's a really nice uh, brown on the bottom. As I mentioned, it's still warm yet. But I'm just going to press on this um, on this for you to show you. I don't know if you can see how very soft and so light and delicate this coffee cake is, especially when I squeeze it down on it. Well, there's some of that great filling coming out, but I don't know if you can see that, but it's so light and it has this nice juicy flavor, but it doesn't have a soggy bottom or a wet bottom. So it just has the right amount of texture, the right amount of lightness to the dough, but it's not soggy. It's not dense. It's not, it's just not going to be real heavy that you might think it might be because it's pears, uh, that type of thing. And let's just show you the other side as well. When I squeeze on it, you can see how soft and it's too bad you just wouldn't be able to, to hold it to see how light and delicate this um, coffee cake is. It's really a great recipe. As I said, it takes a little bit of time because you have to make the dough. But these uh, coffee cakes that are made with yeast are just, well, they're awesome. They're awesome with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or that uh, type of thing. So there you have it. You've got a pear, a fresh pear, and use any kind of pears you want, <laughs> uh, yeast coffee cake. And it's well worth your time and the effort. Um, when you serve it, people are going to enjoy having this, I guarantee you. Uh, well, there we have it. Uh, as a reminder, please watch Diane Love to Bake solely on YouTube. Uh, so many times and uh, you write to me or you have a comment. And if you're not watching me uh, on YouTube, I do not get your message. I can't answer you. It's so frustrating. So please watch my videos on YouTube and I would really appreciate it. Uh, if you're so inclined and you'd like to subscribe or ring the bell or give me a like, I really appreciate it. I um, want to mention too, if you do like fresh pear recipes, I have a pear bread that is just phenomenal uh, that you might want to try. And also I have a pear cake uh, video. Uh, but Thank you for watching Diane Love to Bake on YouTube, and I'll see you soon.